Greetings, everybody. Hello, friends. Coming at you from the, where am I? Minneapolis Sky Club. On a layover, I was uh, in LA and then I was in Iowa yesterday speaking at a, at a big group of patriots there with James O'Keefe as well. And then now I'm on my way to Hawaii for three speaking engagements and a little beach time. So it'll be good. Long flight ahead of me. Wanted to pop off this Sunday musing really quick and share a few thoughts on something that uh, the Utah news at least has exploded with uh, in the past 24, 48 hours. Um, I have a few thoughts to share that I think are going to be different from a lot of what you may be hearing, at least in circles that I run in and Facebook posts that I've been seeing. Um, however, at the outset, I am going to add a disclaimer. Uh, given that this is a very fluid and currently evolving situation, I reserve the right to change my opinion on any of this stuff that I'm about to say, uh, because certainly uh, this story is still unfolding actively right now. That being said, there are a few observations I have that um, I felt worth sharing. And I say this with, with a few qualifications. Number one, uh, I have met Tim Ballard once or twice uh, in his pre-OUR days, back when he was writing his uh, covenant uh, books about the American covenant and um, disagreed with some of his stuff then. I don't uh, really agree with his characterizations and so forth. Um, so I, I had met him, though. I haven't spoken with him since, um, to him rather. Uh, the other qualification is that many of my friends and donors and supporters are friends and donors and supporters of Tim's, or I should say OUR. We'll get into that in just a minute. But there's a difference now <laughs> between the two. So, uh, and I know many people, including people who watch my musings, who are staunch uh, defenders of Tim and supporters of OUR and uh, good people who think that human trafficking is an abomination and rightly so. So with those qualifications, I want to share some thoughts that uh, I've had in the past few days. So for the uninitiated, there was an article on Vice News that came out like two days ago, lost track of time with all this flying around. I think it was two days ago where they uh, claimed that the church, the LDS church, had come out in opposition to Tim Ballard, that they had released a statement uh, saying that he uh, and uh, that he had been abusing his relationship with Elder uh, Russell Ballard or M. Russell Ballard, if you cling to the initial thing still. And uh, that he had been that Tim had been abusing the relationship and that he had uh, engaged in morally questionable activity. They didn't specify what that meant. Um, and consequently that, uh, elder Ballard had withdrawn his friendship and relationship from Tim. Um, and, uh, that, you know, there were these concerns about Tim's behavior. Well, this is interesting timing also because, uh, Tim has been considering running for Senate, uh, us Senate in the seat that Mitt Romney, thankfully has uh, decided not to seek reelection for. And so you have to wonder, first off, like this is curious timing that uh, Tim was on the Sean Spicer show of all things, uh, where he kind of publicly said, yeah, people are calling me about running for Senate, which uh, I should note, people often say that type of thing. Oh, I'm, I'm very encouraged by the many people who have reached out to me and said that I should run for office and so forth. And half the time it's just made up. They're just saying that to give the appearance that there's demand for what they're doing. But... Uh, but Tim said that people have been calling me Sean Reyes, who is the attorney general of Utah. He was asked by the media, hey, you know, are you going to run for the Senate seat? He said, no, but I have a, you know, good patriotic friend who everyone knows he's talking about Tim because they're very close. Uh, Sean has gone on some of these little uh, adventures with OUR and so forth. And so Sean basically let it out as well that Tim was running. So here's Tim building this Senate campaign or, or I should say considering running for Senate. 
And then all of a sudden this um, Vice article comes out quoting a church spokesman, an unnamed church spokesman. And saying that um, they had obtained uh, basically leaked uh, documents from the prosecutorial investigation into OUR and that there was some material in there that they shared with the church that prompted the church to issue this statement. Okay, so, <laughs> I, you know, there's, there's people in, in the comments already who are saying things that I've seen plenty of times online. Number one, this is from Vice. Didn't you know that Vice, they call pedophiles minor attracted persons? They're trying to take Tim out. I'm quoting literally from a, a comment I saw on Facebook this morning. This attack is trying to take Tim out because he fights their agenda. And so this, this total uh, fallacy to try and claim that the story has to be invalid because it's coming from Vice. Now, Vice can be an odious, detestable rag that is wrong 99% of the time, and yet they can still be right about things. I have, I have been saddened to see, look, Tim may be, have, have clean hands. Uh, I, I, I am going to leave space for that as a potential, that he is an honorable person, that his hands are clean, that he did not do any of what has been said. That is an option. However, I think it is problematic for people not to entertain the fact that this statement might be valid, that the substance of it might be accurate, and that perhaps Tim has been engaged in morally unacceptable behavior. That is a potential. Too many people have been placing Tim on a pedestal. And because of the work that he engages in, elevating him to this, you know, demigod status whose conduct can't be questioned. Guys, you should question my conduct. You should question everyone's conduct. How many times have we seen these news stories come out of like a serial murderer? Not that I'm claiming that, you know, Tim or anyone <laughs> is doing anything like this, but we see these news stories coming out where there's this like serial murderer or rapist or whatever it is. And then they go interview the neighbors and the friends and they're like, he's the nicest person. He's the greatest, most gentle guy. I could never have imagined anything like, I mean, how many of those instances do we need to see before we realize that even people in whom we have high levels of trust and confidence can still fall from grace? That is possible with Tim. Maybe that's not the case, but it's possible. So to say that Tim is fighting their agenda, therefore anyone who says anything like this must be supporting pedophilia is ridiculous. And I've seen it all over social media. This is the mainstream media. And, and look, I criticize the mainstream media all the time, but that doesn't mean that they're always wrong. We should be critically thinking. We should have our thinking caps on and not throw out all of these uh, assertions and arguments simply because we disagree with their source or we disagree with the implications if they're true, that we want to envision a, a Tim Ballard savior figure who's out there nobly fighting for the cause. So, so the idea that this story is fake, so many people have said that the story is fake because it's coming from Vice, because they claimed that there was a church statement unsigned, uh, unnamed, it just said church spokesman. Okay, again, critical thinking, guys. Let's do a little bit of research. The same statement was issued to the church's own Deseret News, to Fox 13, to other outlets as well, KUTV, this is not only Vice. So all these comments from people trying to attack the story because of Vice immediately look stupid. Because And, and so then, then when they're presented with that information, then they just jump to the next defensive argument. And again, perhaps defensive arguments are appropriate here. Again, Tim might be totally innocent of all of this. That is an outcome. But we have to entertain the possibility that he's not and that the statement is accurate. And so we can't just attack it because of vice. Other outlets have received this. Same quote. And then I see people saying, the church never does anything like this. The church never issues unsigned statements. I saw that all over Facebook yesterday. I was, I was commenting on several of these posts, correcting people. One individual deleted the post after I commented, setting the record straight that uh, actually the church does issue statements that are not named to a specific spokesperson, uh, person. it just says church spokesman, that happens. 
I literally Googled it yesterday. I, I know from firsthand experience with all my political stuff that it happens, but I just Googled it yesterday. And the first result that came up was a news story unrelated to this issue where it had an unnamed LDS church spokesman. No one pounced on that story like, oh, I don't believe that's from the church. There's not a name attached to it. Right. So so there is precedent for it. So, again, another defensive argument that's ridiculous. Those who employ it look stupid. Because they're 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 clinging to arguments that are easily disprovable. The church does take positions or make statements on things without assigning it to anyone's name. Now, I think they do that for strategic reasons. I may disagree with a lot of it. I think if they're going to make a statement, they should own it a little more and have it be under the name of, you know, the Quorum of the Twelve or the First Presidency or something. This whole church spokesman thing is a way to kind of play the game and, and have arm's length and do things that uh, don't immediately have, you know, religious implications. Uh, I may, this, this is one where I may kind of look through the comments a little bit here on the Facebook Live and, and see if there's some, some real-time stuff to engage with, but I'll, I'll continue for now. The other argument. The other argument is... This is not on the church's website. How do we have any indication? Oh, I, I, I didn't finish the last one. So, so we now have the name of the person. Fox 13 revealed the name of the person. So this whole thing that it's this unsigned statement or whatever, not only is it true that un untrue that the church hasn't done that before, because they have, but now we know the identity of the person who did it. It is the church's current official spokesman, Doug, whatever his name is. Um, let's see, I've got it right here. Uh, Doug something or other, uh, Doug Anderson. Okay. So now Fox 13 released information that it's from the church's official spokesperson. There is a name attached. So again, the those employing that argument look silly. Then, then the other argument is, well, it's not on the church's website. If this were official, it would be on the church's website. Again, how do people come up with these definitions, these standards, they're completely wrong. The church makes press statements all the time that they don't put on their website. Organizations of all stripes will issue responses to reporters for particular stories where they are asked about things and those organizations don't want to promote it actively on their website. I mean, it's like a, it's like a company who's under investigation and they're asked for a media comment. And so they give one to try and, you know, mitigate the damage or whatever. Right. And so they, they, uh, they issue their press statement. That company is not going to go plaster their website with this, uh, this, this statement to give attention to an issue that they'd rather not. So there are various reasons and, and, and factors that come into whether any organization, including the church, is going to plaster something on their website. Guys, the church issues statements all the time that they do not put on the official church newsroom. So again, another standard that is ridiculous, that simply does not apply. Okay, another argument. I'm gonna read a social media post that I saw last night. I stand with Tim Ballard. Doug Anderson has gone rogue. What Doug has done is a public excommunication without any notice. He has borne false witness against his fellow man. The church better explain themselves quick or they're going to have a problem. Okay, so now a concession that there is a named person. It is from an authoritative source, the church's official spokesperson. But now, again, we're just jumping from like argument to argument, anything to maintain the narrative. Again, the narrative may be completely accurate. That Tim is a, uh, you know, I, I, I legitimately believe that that is a potential outcome. But hopefully you know me well enough in doing these musings that even with my own church leadership, I like to question things and look at them to the extent I can with my biased brain as they really are. Away from all the, the cultural crud on top and all the, the incentives to just believe something because everybody else does or whatever. I want to ask authentic questions and understand truth. So the truth here could very well be that all these shenanigans are invalid and that Tim is a completely honorable person. That potential outcome exists. And I believe that that is a potential outcome. But I am not going to deify or or, you know, praise someone to the extent where I shut off the possibility that the opposite is true. 
I'm not going to employ these ridiculous arguments that these people do in defense of a narrative that they believe in, even if that narrative is true, because consistently these arguments are all wrong. So let's, let's now dispense with this one, that Doug Anderson has gone rogue. This post I'm reading from is not the only one I've seen. There are a number I have seen online where they uh, are claiming that the church's PR department has gone rogue. Okay, I'm, I, I'm sorry to inform you, but that does not happen. The church's PR department does not go rogue. Period. If the church's spokesperson is doing something, it is under the direction and at the direction of someone in the Quorum of the Twelve or the First Presidency. Now, last I was aware, and this hasn't changed in a long time, the church's PR work is directly overseen by, I believe, two apostles. At least one, but I believe it's two. And... And everyone kind of has their assignments, right? A couple of apostles might be over all the missionary department, and that's kind of their charge. Another is over all the media relations and PR. Another is over, you know, temple building, right? And so they have kind of these, these jurisdictions, if you will, right? So this is not to say that the Quorum of the Twelve and the First Presidency united all met in the temple, and they reviewed this issue, and they made this decision and told the church spokesperson to say that. No. I don't think that's a likely outcome at all. In, in large organizations, you have compartmentalization and division of labor because there's so much going on. And so you have trusted people who oversee the activities of, um, of, of different departments. And that is true with the PR department as well. Again, based on my most recent information, but I'm, I don't think that's changed at all. These individuals do not do the individuals, meaning the, the staff, and the PR department do not issue statements to the press um, about things without, on, on especially like high profile things of any kind, without clearing it first with uh, their superiors, their their uh, apostolic superiors. Uh, and so the idea that they've gone rogue is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, PR teams exist to give voice to an institution. And so in all cases, these individuals make sure that the voice that they are expressing is accurate. They're going to the senior leadership and saying, here's a draft statement in response to this issue. Will you look at it? When the church came out against medical marijuana in Utah, that I was kind of the ringleader of and, and spearheading this with my team. When they came out against medical cannabis, there were many at the time who argued all over social media that the church's team, PR team, had gone rogue. Because President Nelson would never do this and God would never do this and everything else. And so that was the argument. Guys, it was completely inaccurate, that argument. What happened was that the church's PR team in consultation with their Curtin McConkie buddies, had drafted a statement of opposition to Prop 2, the ballot initiative. They took it directly to President Nelson. President Nelson read over the draft message. He used a Sharpie to make some edits in real time. In this particular case, making their opposition harsher to Proposition 2, more explicit and, and firm and then gave it back to the PR team and then they went and ran with it. And that became the, the sheet of music that they sang from. The PR department does not go rogue. Again, silly argument. Now there's another way to disprove this argument. Let's, let's generously assume falsely that the PR department did go rogue and, and that this is some plot within the church to go after Tim Ballard, that it's some conspiracy or whatever, right? Let's, let's generously and falsely assume that that's the case. Okay, then why, why would the church scrub their website of references to Tim Ballard? So in the past 48 hours since this came out, not only did the church issue a statement to multiple news outlets, including their own, but then they went through and all these like Ensign articles or Leah Hone or whatever you call it now and on the website, there were all these little interviews over time that 
that the church and its various media organs had done with Tim Ballard about his OUR work, and they've been deleted. Now, look, if you want to argue that the PR department has gone rogue to the extreme, not only issuing a statement, but making these substantive edits to the website, more power to you. Go ahead and make that argument. You're flat out wrong. But you can make that argument. The The fact that the church is scrubbing its own website reveals that there's more substance. And, and finally, the other way to disprove all of this is that sufficient time has gone by that if the church really disagreed, if, if senior leadership of the church really disagreed with this and was not behind it, they would have corrected it. They, they would not let something like this stand, especially given how unprecedented it is, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But if, if this wasn't really from the church, then we would have heard about it by now. An institution where they have an employee that goes rogue does not allow that to persist. Now, I might argue against that for a second and say, well, for an organization like the church, where there's this kind of prophetic perception of everything that they do as an organization, you might say, okay, well, they went rogue, but the church doesn't want people to know that their own employees are going rogue. Therefore, they're just going to be quiet and let everyone believe that this actually came from the church when it really didn't. But the church would even worse prefer for the narrative to get out that they have employees going rogue. And so like silly, right? I, I, <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. Again, it's an argument. If you want to use it, more power to you. Okay. So, um, and, and there've been others, I mean, like Glenn Beck was tweeting last night and he's close with him, you know, and talking about how this is a public excommunication that it was done without consultation of local leadership, uh, as in a true excommunication that Tim was not given notice, advance notice, opportunity to respond, all these things. So, uh, Glenn was, was talking about, um, uh, this on Twitter last night. And, you know, as, as with other friends I have who are friends with Tim, rising to Tim's defense. Again, these are noble, good people that I know uh, that have financially supported this effort and more power to them because human trafficking is a horrible thing. Now, unrelated to the topic of this musing, I have for years had deep concerns about OUR. I, in private, have shared those opinions selectively with people who have asked. Um, I have tended to believe that Tim and OUR embellish significantly uh, what they actually directly accomplish. I have been around long enough in this world to know that success has many fathers. And what I mean by that is when events happen, there are many who will take credit for them. And I could share all kinds of stories about that from personal experience of other people taking credit for me and my team's work where they had no material involvement at all. So success has many fathers. And consequently, there are instances, I believe, in which uh, OUR has claimed credit for work that would have been done without them, was done despite them, and so forth. Um, information like that is out there if you want to look for I'm not here to tear OUR down. I'm not here to support pedophilia or human trafficking. Again, like the idea that anyone who dares criticize OUR is, you know, supports pedophilia. It's just ridiculous, right? So we can oppose all these horrific things and still, as Glenn Beck himself often says, question with boldness. Even our own friends, even organizations that we support, I do this with my own church all the time. I you know, do it with Libertas, do it with me, do it with Tuttle Twins, do it with anything that I'm doing. Question with boldness. We need to understand truth no matter where the chips fall, even when it impacts our friends. Again, I will reiterate, it could very well turn out that Tim is an upstanding, honorable person and all of this is crap. But until and unless we understand and, and have evidence of that truth, we have to entertain these other possibilities. You know, people will say, well, there was this, so there was this in investigation by a prosecutor, which is the basis of the documents obtained by Vice that prompted this church statement to begin with. And they, they, they'll say, oh, well, uh, the prosecutor dropped, dropped the case. Therefore, OUR and Tim are, you know, didn't do anything wrong. Well, that's not how this stuff works. 
the prosecutor could have dropped the case for any number of reasons. Uh, the evidence that he had could have been insufficient in his mind to persuade a jury beyond a reasonable doubt. That doesn't mean that the allegations were wrong. It doesn't mean that there isn't any criminal conduct or misdoing of any kind. It doesn't prove factual innocence. It just means that a prosecutor felt like it would be a waste of taxpayer resources to chase this issue if he didn't have, you know, the, 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 uh, the concrete evidence sufficient to persuade a jury. He could have been pressured by others. It could have been the attorney general. It could have been somebody else pressuring the prosecutor, right? Who knows? So many of these machinations happen behind the scenes and you guys don't even realize. Could be pressure from others. It could have been himself, the prosecutor, using his own discretion. Prosecutors don't have to pursue charges. Just like police officers don't have to arrest you. They have the discretion whether to proceed with the process. And he could have just decided, I, I don't want my name to be associated. Like, who knows? For whatever reason, he could have just elected not to do it. None of that says that Tim and OUR are factually uh, innocent of the charges or that there's never been any shenanigans or that they've never claimed credit. I mean, Fox 13 over the weekend re released this video um, where the, uh, in February they were interviewing Tim and the reporter asked him some tough questions, including, you know, hey, has OUR ever taken credit for work that, that you guys didn't do? And it was shortly after that that Tim got fed up and and uh, walked out. Now, you might look at that and say, oh, ha, sticking it to the mainstream media, you know, these guys are the problem. And I'm with you in general, right? So much of our problem comes from the incentives and structure and, and nature of the modern media. So in general, I'm with you. But again, that doesn't mean that in this particular instance, media is bad, Tim is good. In this particular instance, my takeaway in looking at that is that here is an individual who has not been and does not like being challenged. Who who has uh, gotten very used to the adulation and the hero worship and the everything else. Again, I don't mean this in a pejorative sense. We have many mutual friends, Tim and I, and they're all amazing people. And I don't want to, you know, tarnish their reputations or insinuate that they're bad judgments of character. But the potential does exist that Tim has... Uh, been engaged in some shenanigans, despite the perceptions that he's, you know, created about himself or that others uh, have about him. And, uh, and therefore, when the questions start coming, he gets uncomfortable. I mean, I look at that video, and I see someone who just doesn't want to be, you know, challenged. You may disagree with that. And that's fine. But to me, it raises some questions. Um, open questions, for example, continuing with that thread, what does the church mean by morally unacceptable behavior? That is a loaded term. And, and from a church especially, that makes people think all kinds of things. Now, from the chatter I've seen online, most people seem to think that they're referring to affinity fraud. Uh, in this particular instance, using Elder Ballard's name to try and, you know, fundraise, to try and build support for OUR and so forth. Uh, but it's all speculation because the church was not uh, explicit. I, I anticipate that at some point the church will have to issue another statement and clarify their meaning or at least uh, give some further explanation or clarification on this issue. We'll see. I've thought that before and then the church never did. So who knows? Um, the other question is, why did Tim Ballard leave OUR at the peak of fame with the Sound of Freedom coming out? I haven't seen anyone have answers on that particular question. Um, you know, he went off and started his own group. Group. You know, when James O'Keefe got pushed out of uh, Project Veritas, right? All this controversy, all these claims, everything going around that he was overspending, wasting money, you know, uh, having this lavish lifestyle at donor's expense. And so the board pushed him out and, and so forth, right? Uh, when, when, when someone who is so tied to their organization, like, I mean, like if I got pushed out of Libertas, I would hope and expect that all of you would question why, because maybe I'd be embezzling money or maybe I would have been defrauding people, or maybe I would have been, you know, sexually abusing someone, or there could be any number of reasons why my board would kick me out of my own organization. And I would hope that you guys have your critical thinking caps on sufficiently snug 
in those instances to not say, Libertas bad, Connor good, because we like Connor and we trust Connor. I can do stupid things too. I can get kicked out of my own organization. I can fall from grace. I can do all kinds of horrible things. You can too. We all can. Tim can too. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. But it's an open question as to why he left OUR. And with all this other stuff swirling around, the prosecutorial investigation and now the church's statement and everything else, it just makes you wonder. It should make you wonder, despite our shared agreement that human trafficking is bad and pedophilia is evil and all of this needs to stop, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't question uh, what's going on. So uh, Tim posted a video yesterday, or I should say others posted a video on Tim's behalf. He's on some kind of tour uh, with a group and he was filmed uh, speaking out. He got emotional. He got angry. Uh, it was like a 10, 15 minute video. And he claimed that, um, he said, I don't believe the church did this. I truly don't. I'm quoting. I truly don't. Can you imagine the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints would publicly condemn one of its members? So his position yesterday was that he thought someone had gone rogue. He thought that, uh, you know, there's some faction within the church doing this or whatever. He thought vice made it up. He's the one that uh, raised the point about uh, vice calling pedophilia minor attracted persons. So yesterday, Tim is employing these arguments in his own behalf to try and make this that the church, um, that this was made up. You know, from everything that I know and have seen, he and Elder Ballard have historically been very close. That Elder, he said in the video yesterday that I guess Elder Ballard set apart his son to go on a mission, that uh, Elder Ballard visited Tim's daughter in the hospital. They, they appear for years to have had a very close relationship. The statement from the church that came out two days ago claims that within recent months, Elder Ballard has withdrawn that association because of these concerns. Now, from what I also understand, Elder Ballard is going through a bit of dementia as well and having some mental health challenges, which kind of relates to last week's musing topic. For those of you who are new or uh, just now seeing this, I do this weekly. You can go to sundaymusings.org and catch up on all kinds of other topics. Last week, uh, I think it was last week, talked about how I believe that church leaders should have uh, apostles and first presidencies should get an emeritus status. And whether it's at a particular age or certainly when mental decline starts happening, uh, it would be good to uh, allow that option or force that option. They do it for the 70, so, you know. So, so let's entertain the potential that Elder Ballard is being manipulated, that because of his dementia, he is saying or believing things that aren't quite true, and he's suddenly throwing Tim Ballard under the bus and claiming these things and then directing staff or other colleagues to direct staff to distance the church from Tim Ballard, right? I mean, okay, that's an argument, maybe. Uh, but we don't know. We don't know why that association was withdrawn. And Tim, yesterday in his video, defends himself saying that I've never fundraised off of, off of Elder Ballard's name. He even said, he, he said something towards the beginning of the video. I'm going off of memory. He said something. I've, I've never tried to make money using Elder Ballard's name. What, what, how would I make money? What would I do? <laughs> well, not, not only has he made a lot of money uh, leading OUR, you can look up all these financials like you can for Libertas and every nonprofit. They were required by law to post what's called a 990, 990. And so you can look up OUR. You can see how much Tim was making. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. But he launched a supplements company a few weeks ago. I think it was called Freedom. I saw someone sharing it on Twitter. And, and it says, uh, you know, a portion of the proceeds go to uh, fight human trafficking. And it was just this like line of supplements by Tim Ballard coinciding shortly after the release of Sound of Freedom. Uh, so for him to say yesterday in the video, how would I make money as if to suggest that he's not involved in capitalist enterprise or anything is, is also silly. Now, I, I don't believe and I don't think anyone has claimed that Tim was pr trying to push his new supplement company uh, using Elder Ballard's name. However, uh, 
even even if they are distantly related, he might say, Elder Ballard and I work closely together and, and I advise, you know, he advises me and I update him and blah, blah, blah. And then 15 seconds later or 15 minutes later, maybe he's now talking about the work and then saying, hey, will you help us? In Tim's mind, he might say, I never name drop Elder Ballard when I'm fundraising. I, I never use his name for that. But I've seen enough in this world to know that those seeds can be planted in all kinds of ways and the implications can be made and all these things to convey what you want. Ooh, I'm, you know, I'm connected to an apostle in this particular case. You can do that in a way that bolsters your ability over here to fundraise, which Tim profited from personally, as, as I do with Libertas, right? We get a salary, we're, we're paid for our work. So I, I have no knowledge of what Tim may or may not have been, been doing using Elder Ballard's name, but I don't think we can just go off of his word. I think we need more clarification from the church. I think more evidence will be forthcoming. I mean, I don't know if you saw the news, but the Vice article uh, talked about how apparently in these documents that they obtained that, uh, the, that OUR was using some psychic who claimed to be able to commune with Nephi and the psychic would point to the map and say, that's where some kids are, go get them. And I mean, there's all just kind of weird stuff that I hope would lead any critically thinking person to be like, eh, is this true? Uh, is this, is this good? Is this right? Uh, even if we hate human trafficking and hate pedophilia and like Tim as a person and all my friends and great people who support OUR because they see it as the organization doing this good and fighting this fight. Uh, but like Glenn Beck says, question with boldness. Um, I think even our own friends and our own institutions. So where this goes from here uh, remains to be seen. This is a very fluid thing. And uh, I'm, yeah, there's a lot of comments, so I'm, I'm not going to go through them. Um, maybe I've, I've said some of the stuff that I needed to that I... I'll, uh, I'll go reply in the comments later while I'm waiting for my flight. So I'll, I'll just reply there for those of you doing this on Facebook. Um, I'm very curious to see where this goes. It, it is rather unprecedented for the church to issue a statement like this that goes after an individual or goes after might be a weird way of saying that. But uh, I, I struggled to think of an instance in which the church has uh, made a statement to the press about a particular person. They're, they've done things like, you know, going after, um, uh, what do you call it? Energy healing. Uh, and, and so forth. There were all these Mormons who were getting really big into energy healing and cra tr uh, claiming that they could do all these like spiritual things. And they had this like Mormon take on energy healing and foot zoning and chakras and whatever. Right. And the church a couple years ago issued a statement against that. And it was at least apparent in that case who they were talking about because there were some kind of prominent uh, people you know, involved with that. And so that was by implication, focusing on these ringleaders who were, who were doing this. So I, I've seen that in the past where they don't necessarily name a person, but they do kind of laser point at something and try and nip something in the bud. But I think it is rare, um, if not unprecedented, but I doubt it. I'd have to do more homework, but it's at least very rare that the church would issue a statement um, about an individual like this. I, I disagree that he's been excommunicated in any sense of the word. Certainly it's not a good look, uh, or, or he's not in a good position for his own church to say that he's engaged in morally questionable conduct. It makes you wonder because of the timing with the rumored Senate run, if there are people within the church who don't want Tim to be a senator, which again raises the question of why would they feel that way and what knowledge do they have that would lead to that opinion that maybe you and I lack that knowledge. So that's kind of an interesting question mark of, you know, what do they know that other people may not know? And so there may be elements within the PR team and the Quorum of the Twelve or whatever where they don't want Tim to be the senator from Utah. And I think that should cause us to pause and reflect and say, oh, is there something they know that I don't? Rather than just assume that there's corruption, assume that the PR team has gone rogue, assume that uh, this is all illegitimate because it started with vice, right? I think we need to be smarter than that. Um, even when it comes to our friends, even when it comes to our family, we can all make mistakes, we can all do stupid stuff. 
and uh, I would hope that we would practice enough critical thinking. Uh, and I, I should say critical thinking from a friendly perspective. I hope that I have conveyed in this video that I don't have an agenda against Tim. I don't have any ill will. Uh, I, I, I love the mission, the stated mission of OUR, even though I think that as an organization, they may be boasting more than they've actually done or whatever, right? Um, but I can, I can be critical from a friendly perspective as one who's simply trying to know what's true. And one who rejects the idea that just because someone is our friend, we should disbelieve anything questionable claimed about them. Um, I, I think it's noble to stand with your friends, you know, and, and uh, I think that's a natural reaction. Um, and so I don't, um, I don't begrudge anyone who defaults to that position. Um, but my, my style is more to say, well, you know, I, I want to gather more information here and there's some things that are questionable. Let's get to the bottom of it and let's understand what's true because our own friends can deceive us. Our own spouses can deceive us. We can be lied to by any number of people. How many times have there been news stories of spouses, business partners, fellow congregants, church leaders committing fraud and abuse and all these things, people you would least suspect. Let's not be one of those people who are like duped and suddenly, oh my gosh, I never could have entertained that idea. I think it's worth entertaining the idea. And Tim may be completely innocent and OUR may be completely innocent, uh, or they might not be. But I don't want to look stupid, like all these people on social media who are advancing all these arguments that are just rubbish and easily disprovable. I want to go after the truth and let the chips fall where they may. I hope you do too. Uh, it can be uncomfortable. I'm sure it's very uncomfortable right now for Tim and his family. Um, and so I'll be very curious to see where this goes and maybe it won't go anywhere. Maybe we won't see any new statements. Maybe they'll just kind of let that dangle out in the media that, that morally questionable conduct claim. And, uh, they'll be happy that it torpedoed his U S Senate run. And that will be that, um, uh, who knows? I imagine Tim is going to want to speak out more about it, given his past relationship with elder Ballard. I'm sure that now that he sees that this officially did come from the church and that it wasn't just to vice and all these things. I'm sure he's now having to figure things out even more deeply than these superficial arguments that he gave in the video yesterday. So we'll see, we'll wait, we'll watch. But I thought I would come on here. I had another topic prepared even up to last night. I was like, Oh, I'm doing this other topic, which I'll save for next week. Um, but scrolling through social media this morning, cinched the deal for me that this was worth commenting about because I saw too many friends not engaging in critical thinking because of what I will call Tim worship. Um, maybe Tim does deserve all the praise in the world and that we should all stand by him against all these challenges. However, some of these challenges are very serious. They're from, uh, uh, there, there is, I think, evidence that he has been uh, misleading in certain cases. And, and so some of these factors all combine together for me to say, well, something might be a little smelly here. Let's figure out what's going on to determine whether things are worth moving forward. Um, there's these open questions of why Tim is no longer with OUR and what happened there, and the, the prosecutorial investigation, the records of which Vice obtained, which I assume now are gonna be more forthcoming. Apparently Vice is gonna be doing a follow-up story they're soliciting uh, uh, information from people. Uh, the reporters are uh, trying to gather more evidence or perspective from people who've been involved in some of these things. So uh, things are still evolving. However, let's not be so firm in our defense of friends that we aren't on the side of truth if it so happens that truth and our friend uh, are on opposite sides in this case doesn't mean we need to approach this with anger or malice or anything else. I don't have that perspective about this particular topic, uh, but I do value truth and, and critical thinking. And I think it needs to be applied, uh, even to people doing the Lord's work, whether that be Tim Ballard fighting pedophiles across the world, uh, or our own church leaders, friends, family, everybody else, we should prioritize truth. And that's all. So I'm off to Hawaii. Hope you guys all have a wonderful week. 
I will enjoy the sun on your behalf. Probably get sunburned, because I always do. But uh, I'll try and have fun, even though I've got a lot of work this week to do as well. And we'll see you next week.